Hey everyone, welcome to another Godot C Sharp tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do saving and loading. For example, saving your games and whatnot. So let me show you first of all what you're getting. So in here I've prepared a demo. We have a plus one and a minus one button. So I'm going to go ahead and increment that. We can see that the label updates over here. So I'm just going to put that up to eight and then I'll bring it down to five. So we'll keep it at five. I'm going to check this little checkbox here and then I'm going to click this add GUID box. Let's add four, four GUIDs, okay? And I'm going to close it. Okay, and then I'll open it back up. And we can see that everything that we've done has been saved. So there's five there, there's the checkbox, and then there's four GUIDs and they're all the same GUID too. So let's get into the code then. So the first thing to mention is you need to download Newtonsoft, which is a NuGet package. So open up your solution in Visual Studio. I use Community 2017 and go to manage NuGet packages for solution after right clicking the solution up in here and then go to browse and you can type in newtonsoft.json it's right here for me i already have it installed but make sure that you check this box over here and then you will be able to click install here i already have it installed so it's just prompting me to uninstall okay so after you've installed that now we can do our saving and loading so let's take a look at it so on ready, we're reading the save file, which is going to use Godot's built-in method of reading files. So I have this little helper method here called open save file, and that just allows me to pass in a file mode flag. So by default, it's read, um, and then I could pass in write to open the file for writing. But all this does is this uses the Godot APIs to open the file that's at the save path. So the save path is user path save json so whatever your user path is that's where it will be and if we don't encounter an error we're going to return that save file so i'm opening the save file there i'm checking okay is the save file not null which it shouldn't be null if everything worked right then i'll say okay well i'm going to get the json out of the save file by calling save file get line and then i'm going to pass it into this deserialize method if there's a problem with the deserialization, I'm just gonna create a new data model, which is basically effectively gonna create a new save for me, and then I'm gonna close the save. So a couple big things here, we have our data model and our deserialize. Let me explain the data model first, and then the deserialize will make sense. So our data model is basically just a container of the things that we want to save. So I have my count, so this was the number five, if you remember at the top. I have a list of GUIDs, which is the list of GUIDs that I showed you. And I have a Boolean, which is a checked value. So that's the checkbox. So this data model is basically just describing what data we want to save. That's all it's doing. It's just a bunch of members, publicly accessible, and that's it. And that represents our save game, basically. So when, what Deserialize does, so we're using our Newtonsoft package here and we're saying json convert dot deserialize object we're passing in the class that we want to turn the json into so this json is going to be a bunch of strings or sorry it's going to be a long string uh, if you're not familiar with the json file format i would recommend just looking it up it's very simple um, it's basically a nice way of storing a lot of data it's very common in web technology for example and we're going to take this JSON string and we're going to deserialize it into this data model. So what this Newtonsoft is going to do is read the JSON and it's going to find the count property. Here's the count property. I brought up the file. It's going to save our GUIDs here. So that's just a list of all of our GUIDs. And then it's going to have the checked. So you can see that these properties match one to one with what we've described in our data model. Okay. So it's going to try to cast, or it's going to try to deserialize that JSON into the data model, in which case, up here, when we say data deserialize, this data is now going to be a data model object that has all of those values that were read in. Okay? And so now, just down here, we have a bunch of methods to help out with the data manipulation. So we have add count, which just takes our data.count and increments it by a certain value that we pass in. We have add GUID, which is just going to add the GUID to the GUID list. 
We have set checked, which is just going to set the checked value to what we pass in. And then we have get methods for all those things. The one thing I do want to point out here is this. I use a uh, system link to list here because I like to avoid passing around our source of truth data as a reference. So what I do is I basically break that reference by creating an exact copy. But now we can manipulate that copy without worrying about manipulating the core data that we're interested in preserving. And then the last thing I have to describe is the save method here. So this is just going to call write save file. And what that's going to do is that's going to call our open save file helper method with the write flags. That way we can put stuff into the file. We're going to use that same JSON convert that we see down here. And we're going to call serialize object. Now this is basically the same thing except it goes the other way. So it takes our data model object and it writes it into a JSON string, which is this string that we see here. Okay, And then using the Godot APIs, it's going to store the line and then close the file. All right, so how do we use this data? Well, in here, I've set up a bunch of references to the controls, um, so all the buttons and item list and whatnot. I'll go over this in a little bit. So we call initialize here in the ready, which is going to call update count label, update grid list, and update checked. And these basically do what they sound like they do. Uh, we change our count label text to our data manager get count. So we're just reading in the count from the data manager. Um, update GUID list. What we're doing is we're clearing the item list and then we're iterating over each GUID in the GUID list and adding it to this item list. Update checked is as simple as saying checkbox.pressed equals data manager dot get checked. Okay, and then we have some methods here. So we have on count change in here, and then on add GUID and on checkbox toggled. Those are just connecting to the various signals, um, pressed for the buttons and toggled for the checkbox. So on our count change, we're passing in either one or negative one in here. And then we're saying data manager add count, whatever change it was, and then we call update the count label. Similar deal here. On add GUID, we say add a new GUID to the data manager GUID list, and then we say update the GUID list, and then on checkbox toggled, we say data manager set check pressed. And this one is just a binary state, so we don't need to call an explicit update for that UI element. Okay, so that is how we manipulate all the data. Now, what about saving the data? Well, what I've done is on the notification. Um, event from Godot, I'm checking if the notification is a WM quit request, which is basically the user is closing the game. And I say, okay, save, call data manager save, and then get tree quit. And if you recall, save will just take whatever's in our current data model here and write it to the JSON save file. And that's it for saving and loading. Um, you can expand this, I think, pretty easily. Uh, I will note that the data model can basically take any any generic collections type. It can take any base type, so integers, bools, things like that, floats. All right, that was the save and load tutorial. I hope you all found it useful. The repository link is in the description below as well. And I hope to see you next time. I hope that tutorial helped. I would really appreciate it if you guys could check out Tenacious, which is a game that I made with Godot using C Sharp. The Steam store page link is in the description below. And thank you for checking that out, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.